Uh, my name is Jimmy Iovine, and uh, we're in the conference room in my office. Vinoscope Geffen and A&M Records, where I'm the chairman, and uh, doing this interview to, uh, for my friend Herb. The bad news is that it's, it's really tough right now in the music industry, but the good news is there's a lot of, uh, for the same reason, there's a lot of communication, very easy, easy ways to communicate and get your music out to the audience. And there's a lot of great technology and to be able to help you create your music um, and get it on some form of digital form, you know, so you can upload it to the internet, different sites, or hand out CDs at shows and stuff. But the most important thing is that you learn your craft. Don't get ahead of yourself, you know. It's, I think it's very, first of all, I think it's very, very important that artists t today uh, have be multifaceted, be able to see their own video or story or make it or film it themselves, make their own website. I mean, you don't have to do that, you know. If you're born Bob Dylan, you don't have to do that. But. I think, I think having a, a wide view of media and everything that's going on is really, really important. It's, it's a real asset. You don't have to do it, but it's a real asset to have. So I would just, but on the other hand, you really have to, if you're in a band, make sure that somebody in the band or a group of the people in the band can write and really write and be very tough on the songs. And if you can't, then likelihood is if they if you can, if the band can't write, then likelihood is maybe you don't have the right combination of guys or girls or whatever. So you know the song thing is very very important, and I would also say try to be unique and try to be different. Everybody today, if you, if you put on uh, like alternative radio, the guitars sound exactly the same. You know it's like it's. A lot of people blame the record companies for that, but it's got nothing to do with the record companies. It's got to do with the lack of imagination that we're going through right now in certain areas of music. And kids think that they're supposed to copy things on television or on the internet, and that's how they're going to get successful. Well, the best way to be successful is to have it influence you or make up your own thing. A hundred different ways, wherever it comes from. If it's MySpace or somebody brings in an artist or a friend of another artist, it, it, it can come from anywhere. This company's very agile and very light on its feet. And it's not hard to get a record deal here. It's just that the heat has to come with it. It's got to be really, really good, you know, and, or someone has to believe it's really, really good. Personally, I look for now, look for some, something original, something different, you know, something that is, is where the songs are there, but the spirit is also there and to find people that are unique and special well I mean I, I believe that people want all the music and they want access to all the music whether it's download or subscription you know and there's also a lot of talk about advertising models or a combination of but I believe that I think that people really want all access to all the music, be able to have great editorial though. See, right now we don't have any really great editorial in the industry. We don't, no one knows what to buy. There's three million songs online or whatever it is, and no one knows what to buy. There's no, you know, there's, there's no people helping. There's no sites that are really, really good at explaining music and walking you through it and walking you through those sites. They, some of them are very good, but they're also very dry. So I think an environment, the right sort of subscription, for lack of a better word, but where you get all the music and um, you can pretty much do what you want to do with it. You know, not the, sorry, where you get all the music is at your is at your uh, is at your disposal, and you can make lists or trade lists with your friends or. Different things like that. I, I, I think that's going to be. Um, uh, I think that's going to be really important in the next couple of years. CDs, CDs disintegrating, and um, we have. To, I've always said this. We have to make more revenues from the work that we do, and we have to cre increase the opportunities for the artists as well. So when you start out with a new artist, you, you restructure the, the the way the relationship is, and then when the new model does hit which should be soon when we start, we get going on it, 
I think it's really going to be good. I think that uh, people like service. So I think you'd be selling a service as much as you are anything else. Something that makes things easy for people, easy for a family to get music and wire through their house or put it in their car or makes it, tells you what to buy, helps you, helps you with what to buy, rather. So, I mean, the CD going away, I mean, we're still at tons of CDs being sold, but we all know where it's going. But that's just a transition to something else, you know? I mean, the sales are down right now, you know? But that's because it's been very hard to figure out a way to make that transition, I think. I, I think that the record industry has been slow on the uptake for a bit, you know? But it's not as easy as it looks. Well, I believe it's service. I think that we have to, on the, on the actual music side alone, not touring or anything like that, just on the music side, I think we have to really, this business was never had a relationship with its customer. It never has. I think we, we need to have that now, a direct relationship, and I think that we need to service them. And that will turn the tide of something as simple as that. Let's say we had um, a, a subscription service, for lack of a better word, but only this service was in an environment that you could go in and know everything about that artist, things related to that artist, artists that are related to that artist, uh, credible playlists by unique people, uh, all the videos in one place, uh, all this con original content, unique content. Like, artists make a lot of records around this place. Feed them, put, put the music out every month. People are interested in that, you know. So just keep building the service to where it, it's really good. And I think that'll, um, I think that that's one of the things that can turn to tide. You know, I, I, it, it, there are many, many things that are more complicated about all this, but the bottom line to me is get the music, marry it with technology, and make the service incredible. I think they would pay for a service as well. The service was right and good and clean and reasonably priced or, or subsidized and priced, you know? can go a lot of ways, you know, phone companies or, you know, technology companies, hardware companies. There's a lot of ways to do it. And um, remember, whoever has the content in the end, the unique content, especially music, the reason why music is in trouble on the internet is because it's the best app. Because it flows through that thing like, like water. So that's going to really help the record industry in the end. Because if you look at some of these big companies, what they're paying a lot of their bandwidth is like there's kids watching videos, music videos. So if we make them unique to certain advantage, certain big, you know, cable companies or online companies or, or technology companies, if we advantage people, that's really going to be very, 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 our license will be very valuable. And, uh, you know, kids may be willing to steal music, but corporations are becoming less and less because they have a lot more to, uh, to lose. Well, you know, the record industry has, has um, for a very, very long time, really missed the opportunity on advertising. I mean, we're the only, we're the only people in the world that gives away the content, that someone else advertises around it, and we call it promotion. Uh, now, that is just naive. <laughs> it's, it's silly. So, these things happening, in the end, will be a good thing because it's forcing everybody to think like businessmen. Say, okay, what are we doing? How can we, how can we give our content away and call it promotion? It's, um, it's really a silly thing. People that give their music away, usually uh, they're a young band that no one knows. If older group, if, if older musicians are giving their music away, it's usually because no one else even wants to steal it. You know, I mean, you put put one out, song by somebody wants on the internet that they want, and everybody in the world will have it in five minutes. You don't need to give them away. I mean, if you want to, you can. But that's a that's a that's a fly on an elephant's butt, and what the people you reach, you know. 
hopefully those people know your music and they like you because they're, they're there. You know, they're, you're touching them somehow. So I don't, uh, I don't think that's. I mean, if it's giving it away for advertising, I mean, I don't know. Someone's got to pay for it. You know. I mean, unless everybody wants all the music in the world to be free, which is, I guess, communism or something. I don't know. I was one of those guys called the big bed, record company's a big bed wolf. 18 years as a record producer. What happens is, you make a record, you sit in the studio, and you kill yourself. It is so hard, and you're doing the best you can, and you really think you've created, you know, Sergeant Pepper. When in fact you didn't. The hardest thing for any artist to do including when I was a record producer, for me to do, was to look in the mirror and say, you know what? It was me. Everybody wants to be shaggy and says it wasn't me. But the fact is, is that sometimes it is the record company and a lot of times it's the artist. But the artist, simply by what they're called, <laughs> artist, they get a voice like that and it's a very easy target. My album was great, it wasn't me, it was that building, you know? And, uh, you know, what, what can you do about that? So it's over the years, it's eaten away. Now some of it's valid. In the early days of the record business, people weren't getting paid and all this other stuff, whatever. You know, that's all true, and that carries over as well. Sometimes it is the record company's fault. Sometimes people are just incompetent, you know? But a lot of times it's, it's the music, stupid. Right now, some of these guys in urban pop music and hip hop are brilliant. You know, Pharrell, uh, you know, uh, Timbaland, Dr. Dre, you know, uh, Akon. These guys, all guys are really, Will I Am, all really talented guys. They do it all. They can write it, produce it, you know, make the drums. <laughs> they play, you know, they can do it. They can, they can do anything. But um, I think what a great producer is, is somebody who has is born or real strong combination of natural talent and learned ability to feel what excites and can move popular culture and helps guide people to that end. It's about moving, it's the real goal for all of us is to move popular culture. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, everybody wants to get paid, and that's very, you know, it's very popular these days. I mean, talking about it, you know. Uh, but the fact is what we're really trying to do is impact popular culture. And when you can do that, it's really rewarding. So a great record producer understands that instinctively and does everything he can to help move the needle. I would learn how to work all the great equipment I think that's a fabulous thing to have in your whole life, no matter where you go. The fact that I know how to work a console today helps me so much in everything that I do, because I have a feel for electronics. I have a feel for what the stuff does. You know, I just kind of know. You know, when you grow up like that, you know, you should talk about producers, right? Yeah. You should know music. You should. Learn the piano. You should be able to to communicate. You know, it, 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 if somebody changes the key, you should know, <laughs> right? Um, and uh, you should hustle and look for talent. And know that it's not a job; it's a passion and a vocation. And uh, you, you can't do it part time. I couldn't. Well, I'm hoping that uh, we turn into a major platform, which could look like anything. It could look like a network. It could look like uh, uh, it, could, it could look like you know iTunes on stereo on, st on steroids. Rather, it could look uh, it could look like anything. But it, uh, but I, what I'm trying to do is build out that infrastructure to where we can deliver. Whether it's you know going partners with you know all the DJs across the country, or just something as simple as, not simple, but building an online presence with one of the social networks or one of our own, where we can just put out entertainment. And Interscope's not gonna always, I, I, it'll never only put out music. 
We just don't work like that. We'll make movies, we'll make television shows, we'll do short, we'll do shorts, we'll do direct to direct to telephone. You know, we we uh, do a lot of crazy things. We we um, outside anybody that's really gifted at any almost anything that resembles popular culture. If I met a great artist, painter, sculptor, I back him. I, I that fits right in here as far as I'm concerned. If they have some competency in recording it themselves or have a friend that has a, a good knack for it, is get music recorded. It is so easy to get to the public right now. All you have to do is, you know, put a pretty girl on the front page of your MySpace page and they'll play your song. You know, it's, it's, it's not, that's not literal, but you know. Um, I would do that. I'd get, I would go out and try to get great live. I mean, music you mean as an artist, right? I really work on my live thing because that's really not a lot of... It's, it's really an asset right now, but people don't really work as hard as they should on it. Some people do. Some bands do. You see, they get real audiences in certain cities and they start to build their thing, get on tours, and they really hustle. And, um, you know, just... That's pretty much what I would do. I'd make my music great. See, that's the whole thing. And, you know, and hopefully you'll have a clear a clear view of what is great and what isn't. Because either way, you'll be told. And then you'll blame the record company. <laughs> but it's not. But, uh, but that's okay. Um, I think, um, like, if you're living in some small town somewhere, we have the Internet now. And, I, again, I'll say it again to so maybe use this one. The fact that the, inter the internet is hurting the sales of music so much, it is also making it so easy to communicate with people about music. It's so easy. And the record industry has to get itself in the flow. And it will. It will. There's no, there's no doubt. But, I've, but artists, if they really want to right now, they can find out what they've got. You can get out there, like Soldier Boy. We signed Soldier Boy. There's four million kids watching his video. Four million people watch the video. I mean, we have to be geniuses to sign Soldier Boy. <laughs> Online environment and music is so rich and it's not organized yet, which it will get. And, and there's a lot of nonsense. People like to hear themselves talk a lot, but I think that, first of all, they absolutely should get they are being more educated. I can tell you kids that come in here, young kids, they're completely different brood than 10, 15 years ago. Different kid. I would do a lot of self-contained stuff. You know, I'd get my website really popping, you know, make it real exciting, exciting as I could. But I'll tell you, in the way this world is right now, when you've got six television shows auditioning, Two million people each around the world, or ten thousand. I mean, you got all these record companies, all these people on the internet. You'll get heard. You will get heard. You know. And it's a tough game. A lot of people, you have to keep your music solid and pure. It's really hard to get through the the maze. But just believe in yourself. Whatever it is there'll be someone who's going to organize it and put it together, and that'll be called the record company. It'll, you know what I mean? It's a matter of, of you know, who. But I, I feel good about it because we're, we're doing a lot of different things. We're, we're going a lot of different areas. We're starting an online magazine with Gwen Stefani, you know, and it's so incredible to work on that with her. It's just really fun, you know. Um, we have a couple of nightclubs with the Pussycat Dolls, you know. So we do a lot of different things, you know. Really, uh, we had the U2 iPod, you know, we were partners in that with them. So we do many things now, and it's really, uh, but it's going to grow from there. The things that we're going to be doing are broader and bigger in scale. I'm trying to find myself, you know, so if that does that, then great. And I'm never, I'm never s settled, you know, about it. I really just keep pushing the barrier to find out where where it is, you know, and I'm going to keep pushing. I think there's 
it's somewhere about what I was talking about. I, when we get our platform going, I think it's going to be a good model. And it'll be a good model for whether you're a kid or whether you're a major. 